Um, the session concerns um, institutions, uh, institutional arrangements, policy and finance for fetal sludge management. It's going to be followed after lunch by another session on the same theme that will take the, the topic further. And I think after this morning's introductory uh, session, um, it's pretty clear that this is a critical part of uh, what we here for. But if we want to scale up, we want to make sustainable uh, the progress that's been happening at the city level and at other levels, that one's got to have policies, institutions, and sustainable <coughs> finance uh, uh, in line uh, for that. So we've got four speakers from um, different contexts, um, uh, all uh, knowledgeable about uh, some of the recent work that's been happening in this field. And we're going to start with Mbe Guerrero, who works for ONES in, um, in Senegal, a dedicated agency that concentrates on urban sanitation. Um, and he's working, he's, he's employed by ONES, but he's also uh, working specifically on a project that they are doing with the Gates Foundation um, to develop specific uh, options and drive progress on people's sorts management. So I'm going to ask uh, the way to, to come to the stage. We are happy to be here to share <coughs> on us experience on fetal start management. The objective is to present some innovative tools on fetal start management. In Dakar, we try to improve the working condition of engineers and several tools are developed in this perspective. And we share with you the program put by the Union Foundation of Five Years. And the objective is to improve the working condition of MPS and to reduce the cost of the emptying costs. What is the outline of this presentation? In the first time I present the context. What we do about the program objectives, the expected results, the program activities and the key results. About the context, we need to know a little bit about the main model in Senegal. We can say Senegal is the one of the African utilities or, or one of the African countries where we have an office dedicated only on sanitation, on urban sanitation. The Senegal National Sanitation Utility work on sanitation and is the main responsible on sanitation. He, he, he works with local municipalities, he works with the other in the stakeholders in the sector in order to improve the sanitation at the environment. But the rural sanitation is belong to another direction uh, in the sector. And alongside the government, we have MTS because we, we, we realize that the MT activity is a private one and the main actors are manual MTS and technical MTS. We realize also that municipalities have something to do in the sector because sometimes they have some slight strong trucks and they help the poor people to access to empty activity. And we have donors like Gate Foundation, like World Bank, who accompany the uh, country on the fecal slash or on sanitation uh, And the project is located in Dakar. Dakar is the capital city of Senegal and in Dakar the project concerns uh, Pekin and Gedeway and Pekin and Gedeway is the most inhabited place of Dakar. We have 1,200,000 inhabitants in this area. The standard of living is very low because the majority of households earn less than $2 per day and we can say also that over 75% of households use individual sanitation. Uh, sludge is contained in big sludge and the average cost of on-site sanitation, mainly big sludge, is very high, 130 USD per year in the house. We realize when people earn less than two dollars per day, this amount is really, is really good. <coughs> this picture was taken by Dr. Linda Strande in Dakar between 9 p.m and 2 p.m. This show you a contract has been found at every corner. This shows the large quantity of fetal slabs they produce in Dakar. 
Right now, we have 1,500 cubic meters per day in Dakar. And we expect in 2030 to collect more than 2,500 cubic meters. This large quantity may essentially the implementation of the sustainable effects of the national system. The government realized we can't continue, can continue to, to, drop, to dump uh, such big amount of effects of in the nature. This is why we realized with the work of weapon, the government built several federal structures in the past in order to take in charge of these provisions. And the main problem is the issue of about the and the main problem is about emptying. Money and emptying is very wide spread in Dakar. Because why it concerns 52 percent of the population. And why money and emptying, emptying is wide spread? Because the price, it is the, 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 not too expensive, the cost is less than the half uh, the cost of mechanized assembly. Uh, these activities doesn't require any capital equipment and there is no barrier to entry in the country. But these activities cause several problems like the strong negative externalities to surround the labor room and health consequences in this structure also. And this picture is an illustration of Dakar emptying trucks. These trucks we realize are too old. These trucks are, in fact, second hand, are both second hand in Europe after 20 years of life cycle. We realize with such a fleet, nobody can imagine a good emptying vehicle truck manufacturing system. That's why we need to do something to improve or to renew the fleet in order in order to have a good federal slash management system. But these systems are too old, but they help a lot because we realize that 50% fewer incidences of diarrhea among children in house of using mechanical test right? We have not brought these drugs, they help, but we need to renew it. What happened in Senegal? The story began in 1996. And in 1996, the government realized that we have to fight against the marginalization of sanitation in favor of drinking water. All the project in water and sanitation sector was devoted to water, drinking water supply. And in 1996, the government decided to put on us a national sanitation utility devoted only on sanitation. And we realized after this day, many investments Many, many technical selection and plant or many research and plant was built uh, thanks to this new reality. Because I, I explained a lot when I traveled to India, say new things are very important, but the most important thing is institutional arrangement. We need to know who is the main responsible of sanitation, who is uh, doing what. This is something very important. It is why the first thing to do is to think about institutional arrangement. And in 2003, to, thanks to World Bank, a big project called Bakun was implemented in Dakar. And the objective of Bakun was to implement uh, on-site sanitation facilities at the house of the And due to this, uh, thanks to this program, 63,000 of on-site sanitation facilities was built in Senegal. And we realized with such an important uh, facilities, we have to produce too much fecal sludge. And the question is, can we continue to dump this fecal sludge in the nation? Why the government, uh, with the World Bank, decide to build free fecal sludge in the ground. And uh, when you come to Senegal, this is the rare African uh, countries where you can find free existing or free functioning fecal sludge in the treatment plant. And in 2004, we have the first health treatment plant in Dakar. And since 2005, the government on the national sanitation utilities signed an agreement with the Sandex, the ERI, in order to improve the functioning of these technologies, in order to help the government to know how to optimize these new technologies. And in 2006, we functioning of prefects are currently functioning in Dakar and the ONAS operation in 2012. This federal treatment plant was uh, operated by ONAS, but we realized with this gate funded project, we privatized this operation uh, to the sector, to the, to the private sector. 
Second slot management is a good one check coming from capture to end. And the goal is to make installation services safe and sustainable by addressing the failure to effective collection and transport, treat and do best for on site facilities. What we realize in Africa, when we talk about second start management, people think a lot about facilities and about treatment plants. But we, we, we forgot that this system, the private sector is very involved and will have a good place in this, in this chain. It is why our objective is not to, to, to focus on a, a specific segment, but our objective is to focus on the good value chain in order to, to conduct activities in each segment of the chain in order to reach the main goal, how to decrease the cost of the empty activities in Africa. And what, is, what are the main expected results in this project? 200,000 additional persons practice, will practice mechanical distraction at the end of the project. One, more than 1 million persons have improved their hygiene condition. The number of households practicing manual empty will decline from 47% to 30%. This is a big issue. And your household spending consolidation evolved from 120 USD in 2012 to 50. We have to decrease by half the price of the empty cost. <coughs> this is one goal of this project. We have also to, 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 in, to, to increase the volume of the threaded checker search from uh, 2012 to the end of the project. We have also to make as well that at least 270,000 persons in the second cities of Senegal have access to the mechanical Tesla services. What are the main activities? I'm a little bit talkative and I forget my <laughs> The main program activities at, in the first at the house of the world, the objective is to develop at least two to three innovative toilets technology and service model for full front areas. Realize that in Dakar, 20% of people live in flat front areas. For these people, we cannot talk about empty. We talk about toilets. Because the flood uh, definitely damaged the uh, on-site facilities in this area. This is why we launched a tender at the international level to find solutions for this city, for, for this area. And we got two proposals, one coming from Ghana by Biofield Kong, one coming from China, Sunny Breeze, in order to propose some solution adapted to, to plant plant areas. And at what we plan to do in the transport segment, the objective is to develop the certification. Everybody can do empty activity in Senegal if you have your track. But in this part of the, our project, we develop some criteria, <coughs> some criteria in order to say if you want to do mechanical activities, you have to respect this criteria in order to get the license from the government. Something very innovative, we develop a platform, a call center. Uh, right now, when you want to empty your pit, you have to go uh, in the street in order to find an empty activity. But we build a call center and you use your mobile phone. You go to the Senegal National Sanitation Utility and say, I want to empty my pit. And the Senegal National Utility, uh, with, this, uh, with its platform, made into competition several MDLs. In, uh, within this competition, we fight against pollution existing between MDLs, and we arrive to decrease the cost of, of the, of the, of the emptying cost. We work also to improve the access to investment to in MTS. MTS say we cannot access to credit. This is why, thanks to the Gate Foundation, who put a guarantee fund in the bank, and one can empty or one can improve or to, 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 to renew its fleet, if we go to this bank and get empty, get uh, credit without any guarantee. And right now, we've got 20 new trucks in Dakar, thanks to this program. We test a new, we will test with the Gate Foundation a new equipment called the Omni Industry. I will not talk a little bit more about that. And what is the, uh, the results? We realize that when we put the MTS in competition with the call center, we decrease a lot the empty cost. Without only the competition, the price decreases from uh, 30,000 francs to around. Uh, 20, 
thousand francs CFA be decreased by 20% the cost of MT uh, only by making MT a competition. This is a trap we purchased with the Guarant Food. And in that time, you have this new trap uh, uh, doing emptying, uh, emptying the pit. And this trap will uh, get uh, with this day funding program. We realize also we need to change. And the main problem when uh, we face a plant, we have several difficulties to balance the cost of our treatment plant. Because this treatment plant cannot create enough added value in order to be profitable. It is why with the Gate Foundation, we are working to introduce a new equipment called the Omni Processor. And the Omni Processor will allow us to, uh, to, to make some electricity uh, 300 uh, kilowatt per hour. We can uh, produce 28 uh, cubic meters of drinking water. We can produce 20 tons of ash. And this ash can be also used uh, for in agriculture. And by uh, operating this uh, new equipment, we expect to create enough advance, enough revenue in order to balance the cost of, of, of the treatment plant. And we realize also, uh, alongside the free existing financial treatment plant, we need a fourth, because data produce 1,500 millimeters and only 1,000 go to the free existing financial treatment plant. It is why, thanks to the Gate Foundation, we built right now a fourth financial treatment plant in the suburb of Dakar in order to pay the 500 kilometer remaining. And uh, we are uh, uh, something very important, some uh, a big achievement is right now. All the pre existing financial treatment plant in Dakar is operated by the private sector. On our delegated this, this uh, and Rama said in the beginning, these uh, fair treatment plants are not profitable. I lose so much money. And when you visit in the past this existing fair treatment plant, you realize that the operation is not well done. But right now, since we privatize this fair treatment plant, it, 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 it is very, very nice to visit them, and they earn money right now. And every month, on us get some revenue from this existing fair treatment plant. It means uh, only by privatizing. We, we invest the, the trend. We invest the trend. From loss, we come to profit. Uh, it, it is something very important to, to do also. What are the main things that first contract signed with operation of the free tech and start processing plant in Dakar? The customer management platform that will offer affordable service fees to poor household in Kikin and Bidoy. We not a project leadership in fact on our weekly board of director meeting. Improved relationship between ONAS and non white sanitation service providers. Uh, increased visibility of FSMTS job profile. We have a database of 60,000 household applicants have been analyzed. I forgot only to mention that the main difficulties of the call center we need in the beginning to reference all households in the beginning. And right now, ONAS know what's happened in each household. What are the main sanitary conditions? What, what is the size of the pit? Is the pit accessible? And uh, we are also geolocalized all the truck in Dakar. Every day in our computer, in my office, I will see all the trucks moving in Dakar. And in my uh, tender, I can say these trucks are not far from this house. The tender will concern only these trucks. It is something also very important. Network of art network of innovative technology and business model is also existing. And we have a current case in Dakar for many other issues. Thank you very much.
And that seems to be the enabler to get FSM really taken seriously. I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, how that came about. Was that one sanitation champion who was able to create that structure and get that, that conversation going, get one entity talking about sanitation? And how did you get them to, to move away from the sewers and talk about FSM? That was 1996. That's at least 20 years in the making to get to where you are now. So it just seems that you can talk about how that came about and how some lessons for others who sanitation is very mixed within lots of different institutions. As I explained in my uh, presentation, in the beginning, the government realized that since before 1996, sanitation was poorly taken in charge in the police regulation of the political government. They realized that all the and all the new projects were devoted to, 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 to the water sector. And we realized that the sanitation belonged to SONES. SONES was the main uh, organization responsible for water and for sanitation. And when they planned some new project, all these projects are devoted to treatment. We realized in 1990, in 2000, when they went to the back with the government and made the program water sectoral program. We realized that the people who work on sanitation realized that they form a sanitation. Uh, a big part of the program was devoted to water. And, and the government said, we need to stop and to think about how to improve the institutional arrangement of, on, of the water sector, water and sanitation. Okay. And uh, this was, they cut these societies, they broke the society into the third one. Uh, one devoted to, 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 to drinking water and another one dedicated to, to sanitation. And this has been very important in the beginning because we have some executive thinking only about sanitation. When the drama is coming to Dakar, they have one introductory of these arts and right now we realize things that is main investment was that this. How we can the right in, in this new organization. It is explain the success of Senegal and the management. It is just a political building. A political building. The government was uh, very, very, very aware that we need to change the institutionalized arrangement in order to make things moving for consultation. For me, the political value in the political building is something very, very, very important. And uh, I just want to add that Fekas Lodge, for us, is not only responsible for Fekas Lodge management. For us, it's responsible for Westwater and Fekas Lodge. And in Senegal, 90 percent are on site sanitation, and only 10 percent are on Westwater are on collective sanitation. And for us, we uh, need these two, two parts of the sanitation. Thank you. Um, I see. I'm building a lot of the Center for Policy Research in Delhi. I've been very interested in this example for a long time. Could you comment on when you brought the various uh, you know, the private players together on your competition platform? Did you face any resistance from them to organize them into such a group? Because obviously they would have to lose profit. So if you did, and how did you overcome? Thank you very much for your question. The function of the call center, the call center can function without the strong involvement of the NPS. It is why the, the, the change we have in Senegal, we have a free association between all the NPS existing in the center. We can say that 95% of NPS are members of this association company. And uh, in the beginning, uh, I forgot to explain that the employers are part of this program. We are going to build this program. We are going to build this program with the Gay Foundation. The employers sit together uh, with Ola <coughs> in order to, to define the main activities. And the first thing we did before we launched the whole center is to train a lot and to 
sensitized zakatul. We have uh, less than 100 meeting every day in our office with the MPs in order to explain some that the whole center is not something who is would be, it is not a, a competitor of the MPs. The whole center is just a platform which can help you to organize the supply. You can earn more money, you can you can reach more clients if we join the whole center. And at the end, the MPs realize that the whole center can help them with their job. And right now, in Dakar, when you see the transfer, if each MPL puts the number, the phone number of the call center in each structure, it just means that they realize that this one call center can help them in, uh, in the productivity of their activity. And when we discuss with them, in fact, really, maybe we can share with us in the FSM4, uh, inshallah, we, we realize that MPLs earn more money with this call center. Uh, this is why, uh, what, what I can say, the training and the sensitization of uh, the MPL is a key issue to implement correctly this time. Um, uh, good morning. We started 15 minutes late, so uh, it's going to be uncontrollable if I am too liberal at this point. Uh, I hope the audience doesn't mind if I stop here with questions. Let's take the other speakers to say that we're going to join you. So thank you very much. So the, our uh, research uh, focus on on-site on sanitation system and willingness to pay for emptying in uh, urban areas in uh, three cities. So the, uh, the research is part of the technical assistance. So the technical assistance is to uh, assist government to, to identify technical and social factors to promote uh, improved aesthetic management and also to develop pilot program to for national scale up. So the scope is a field research and now uh, field research in three cities and then followed by uh, pilot program in six cities. <clears throat> the respondent profile of this research is the low to middle income household. And we do the we did the uh, survey to the household, and also we, we did the focus group discussion with separation of men and women groups, and we also did the technical uh, survey to the on-site system of the household, and also we we did the interview with the uh, key stakeholder from the local government up to the uh, local leaders. So we also work, working together with IWAS. Uh, this is a, a program. We, we have similar program with IWAS and this is under the USA uh, funding program. So this is the, uh, the site of our uh, re, uh, research and also pilot. So we conducted uh, three in uh, the research in three cities, and also we are going to do pilot in uh, six cities. 
the finding uh, from the finding that almost household use the on-site system, although no uh, agency or department responsible for to manage the on-site system, and also no standard or gu gu guidance uh, are available. So, uh, household, if they want to build their on-site system, they rely on, on Mason, Mason experience and also knowledge, or they just copy the design and construction from the neighbors. Then also, not only community, but also local government perceive that the on-site system is the uh, private domain. And uh, we don't have any regulation on wastewater in our research cities. And uh, this is why um, we cannot uh, not enforce what uh, the good on-site system in each uh, local government. So most of the household um, discharge their uh, waste from the toilet to the on-site side uh, storage uh, whenever the form and 6% is uh, directly discharged to the uh, waterways and 3% of household still uh, difficult in the open and most of the grey water from uh, laundry, from showering or from co cooking is that discharged directly to the uh, river or drain or and um, almost 27% or, or one third of the uh, system had overflow pipe to discharge to the river or waterways because they thought this is uh, the good way to manage when the tank empty or to avoid to be emptied. Lack of support and monitoring from the Government, as you can see from all pictures, so uh, no monitoring uh, of what is uh, constructed. So if uh, we, we we can see here that in Indonesia, tanki septic is not really a static tank. So this is more the um, soft pit or leach leach pit because uh, most of, of the tank uh, constructed unsealed and as well as the base. As you can see here, most uh, of household use two chambers of, of tank, but most are open base. So, um, because of the, the small house plot and also no land available, uh, so the distance between wild and also the, the on-site city is very narrow. So 70% is less than 10 meters. And uh, almost the, the similar percentage for the uh, vertical distance from uh, water level to the bottom of the tank. Although the, uh, the, although the water from well is used for uh, domestic activity other than uh, Drinking. So if you can, can see here that the empty is not a common behavior or practice by among the household. So the household only request emptying when there is problem with their toilet, if their toilet is not functional, fun functional, or maybe very slow flowing of the uh, during flash. Um, when the they said that this tank is already full or water comes out from the toilet or even the tank and or toilet block. 47% of the tank never been empty. But for the uh, household that ever empty, you can see also here that the tendency is uh, higher after the 10 years uh, of using the tank. So here it's uh, both female and male, female, female and male groups uh, said that the, the, the empty is 
more good technical, and they thought this is also related to the uh, fixing the toilet or construction the tank. And uh, male has dominant role in uh, empty, so uh, requires making a request and set up the time for uh, for the, the, the empty, and also supervise the slot removal and also resealed and also do the premium for the service. Here are the pull and hook push factor for the regular discharging. So from technical side, it's difficult to have an access to the pit because most of the pit are under the pile. And if there is access available, there is a only few can be open because they are they cemented or they put mortar on the top of the main hole. And also there is problem that uh, about one third of the tank had overflow pipe to the drain. So the, this tank will never uh, will never full. From the social side, there are different knowledge and understanding among the participants. So some of participants uh, said that the waste, if there is already in the ground, they will not harm anybody. And also, uh, they never thought about what happened to the waste after they are use, using the toilet. But some positive respond that they are willing to pay if there is a, if the uh, environment is cleaner or and healthier. But some said also that. Almost 30% said that the never empty tank is a good tank, or the 70% said that never empty tank is a is a good tank. And also that someone also some of the participants said that uh, a septic tank is better than the so. So we discussed the idea on the curriculum uh, is in every four years. So. Most of the uh, participants said that they are interested in this uh, idea because this is um, uh, more affordable for them to pay in install installment. And also, this is they see this is the government support for the low income people. And they also think that if this can be applied, their uh, environment and surrounding can be uh, healthier, cleaner, and more smart. And, but um, the household who had ever emptied their tank show with an interest to this uh, this idea. So the willingness to pay it in average is uh, 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 per, per month. So the lower, lower interest group said that they are not interested in this uh, idea because they thought this is um, the empty is only needed when there is a problem with their tank or their toilet. And they already have a big tank, so it's sufficient enough to uh, empty it for, and to be used in uh, many years. And so far there is no problem with their exiting, so why they, they want to be included in this uh, uh, program. So for those that are interested in this uh, Uh, interested in this uh, program, that uh, they prefer to be to pay in monthly uh, basis, and also pre prefer to pay to the trusted local government office or local leader, and also prefer to to have a single billing with the water pipe or uh, garbage collection fee. But also, community worry about the sustainability of this uh, program because they said that. The, Perhaps this, uh, the operator cannot do the emptying um, on time, and there is no uh, rules or guarantee given by the local government, even though they already pay for the installment. And some houses which are located uh, in narrow street uh, worry that they will not be uh, so because it's too far from the wider.
this is what we will we want to do with the cities. So with cities there are about uh, six activities that we want to be uh, conducted and also with the central government. So with the central government we will want to do the further research for the on-site system and also provide guidelines for the uh, improved uh, smart treatment design and also uh, support uh, national government to provide uh, training material, dissemination material in uh, national lab defense. So this is the, what we want to do with the uh, six cities. So more things, they are more ready with this uh, pilot program. And this is depending on their readiness and also what are available in each city and also uh, the capacity of uh, each local government. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, two questions. Thank you for your nice presentation. Can, can I just ask the question? Just keep the questions very short. We, we really have the time for it. Oh, thanks. As per your research, local government institutions and the central government is responsible for planning, implementation, uh, supervision, and overall management of sanitation, mentioning FSM. But as you mentioned, government is not supporting well. I'd like to know why the local government institution is not capable of improving the overall sanitation as we need for the community. Okay, I'm going to take the second question and you can answer both of them. I think this question of local government is something that, that in a sense is raised by the first question. My question is that Indonesia was very famous for its Kampong Improvement Program. Many years ago, a bank was involved in a lot of other agencies. Now, given the Kampong Improvement Program and a lot of work that happened, I'm surprised the situation that you described. So, were these the cities where there was no kit or was there a kit but the kit, that is the Kampong Improvement Program, did not take into account outside? Okay, uh, for the first uh, question is about uh, local government. Uh, in each city that we are, uh, we, we did the research, there is no agency responsible for the on site uh, system, even though there is agency responsible for the system. Uh, plan. So this is perhaps one of the uh, one of the uh, one, one of the like in the you know, in the uh, local uh, agency arrangement. So I think that we were we want to support the city with this uh, this uh, this situation. So maybe one of the uh, one of the our uh, support to the city is to provide them with the, uh, to review the, the tasks of the agency. So we will put it into one of the agency that are responsible for sanitation. And also we want to also to uh, support them with, provide the local regulation. So we will input to the, the uh, their uh, exiting uh, uh, local regulation on the wastewater if they have. For the KIP, that's uh, that maybe happened about 20 years ago, and that the European Commission stopped. And we, we, that's uh, what I I heard. But for us, Suryanto can also uh, is the from the Bhatpata, so you can can uh, respond to this question. Uh, I think it keep, yeah, keep Kampung in Kampung Improvement is a uh, long, long time ago maybe, but uh, it's in line with the uh, program. I'm from local government of Balikpapan. Uh, of course, I took uh, many thanks to uh, WSP yeah, to support our uh, policy for this uh, visit. 
And then this year, we will have commitment to make regulation of regulation and then uh, to buy some equipment like parts and so on and then to stronger uh, in this side. Thank you. Thanks. There will be opportunities for more questions or comments uh, later. I think we're going to move to our next speaker, uh, Joseph Ravi Kumar from the Water Sanitation Program in, uh, in India, uh, South Asia, um, for the World Bank, and he's going to talk specifically about um, the case studies in, uh, in India. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, this presentation was supposed to be made by the Principal Secretary from Tripura on their uh, approach to septic management across the state, but unfortunately he was unable to come, and here I am trying to present what they intend to do. Just to get the, the context and then the strategy and what they've achieved so far. Yeah, Tripura is a state in the northeast part of the country in India. It's about 20 cities with a population of about 0.8 million, roughly about 20% of the population. And if you see the size of the towns, the majority of them are about between 10,000 to 20,000 population. The largest city is the city of Agartala, which is a million plus, and there they had attempted to do sewerage system under a government concept program, which covered 10% of the state. Recognizing that those cost enormous amounts of money and also more than the, the capital grant, the operation and maintenance, the government consciously decided that there are other options to consider and therefore decided to look at on-site. The good thing about Tripura is that 98% uh, of the households in urban area have toilets and people use them. And a uh, high percentage of households there are on on-site systems. And uh, there currently do not exist any safe collection and treatment mechanism. The government had developed uh, an urban sanitation strategy which looked at how to improve sanitation in the state and also uh, looking at issues of uh, sewer system for small towns was a scale issue. The government of India had come up with an advisory on septage management, which uh, around 30, 40 percent of urban India are dependent on on-site systems. And uh, just rough of uh, fact of the envelope, one calculation show that on-site systems capex is about fourth of what is required for network systems and ONM costs are roughly comparable. And that was the one of the drivers for the state government to go forward and look at on-site systems for the state as a whole. And the government of India also had a scheme called to support those cities in the northeast and therefore they proposed one of the towns as a pilot and then to learn from there and then how to take that forward. These are some photographs of and septic tanks in the city which is Vishalgar, which is just outside of Agartala. Now, the government came up with a strategy which was approved last year and that sets out a time frame and a vision. The vision and time frame being that by 2017, the entire uh, sanitation through on-site systems will be covered in the town. They also provided a framework for cities to engage on on-site sanitation making it mandatory to clear and empty uh, septic tanks and also looking at the reuse and that the monies for operation would be coming through user charge. The principal covenants on the, on the strategy was either to uh, empty happen as and when needed. So from that they needed to move to regular desludging so that you would then have an assured business to the private center. They also want to look at uh, a clustered approach because there were about 20 towns across and therefore having 20 septic treatment facilities wouldn't make sense. So they said wherever possible they could cluster them together and that they would serve and distances was a key factor in clustering. And they also looked at the whole question of devolution in how giving cities a responsibility and to help them along and nudge them along and build capacity along the, along the way. Look at sustainability of systems and, and reuse was an important component in all of this. So roughly about uh, four clusters covering three to five towns and about three individual treatment facilities. Um, this is the kind of an institutional arrangement they are looking at. 
at the state level, you have the, the principal secretary along with his team, which will be providing directions, finances to the state. They're planning to constitute a state urban sanitation cell, which will be manned by experts who will be coming in, something like a, a project management unit, which will provide capacities to cities as they take on the responsibility for implementation. Cities would be vested with the responsibility for, for, for implementation. Of course, the, they would rely on the project management unit for technical support, rely on the state government for financial support, and rely on householder for collecting the charges. There would be a standing council, which is members of the elected body along with the administrative officials who would be giving approvals and consent going forward. The, where we are is uh, the, the, the strategy has been approved by the government. A detailed project report for the first pilot has been submitted to the government of India. That has been embraced and we have told that it has been approved. So in the next uh, four to five months they will be going out to tender. And thereafter then taking up to scale in other towns. The idea is that by the fourth quarter of 2017 to address all towns in the state. And just this is where we are. I kind of said that. Um, happy to take questions. Thanks. Thank you. Are they, uh, Hi, I'm Asim from India Central University. My question is that the idea of the treatment plant is very good. But what's your take on the trip that increases the user class will also increase? What's your take on that? Uh, we have developed a, a, a spreadsheet model for the states and therefore you could actually plug in distances. And when the cost becomes too prohibitive, then you say you can't probably cluster them. And that's why those clusters came about. <laughs> um, how would you ban or avoid manual scavenging and uh, other stakeholders in this whole process? Uh, in the state, there is no manual scavenging. Whatever is happening is currently happening through mechanical uh, trucks which are involved in the process. In terms of stakeholder consultation, when the strategy was prepared, uh, there were intense consultation held at both at several cities as well as the national cap as well as the state capital. Uh, participants were asked and aired their views and their views were taken into consideration before formulating the strategy. And in the pilot that I mentioned to you, there has been intense consultation going on with the elected official and the citizens at large and how to take this thing forward. Thank you very much. I think uh, we'll move on to the other speaker right now. And now I'm giving off to that for the discussion. Uh, I'm asking Ian Ross to join us, who's uh, from Office of Policy Management, who's <coughs> working with a number of other uh, institutions like WEDEC um, uh, to do uh, people's touch management uh, study for the Google Group and want to see how And he's going to talk about some of the institutional and political parties. Okay, so, okay, there we go. Uh, so the context of this work is that Mr. P is currently uh, funding OPM and WEDEC to do some research in five cities. Um, the ones listed there, I won't describe this in any more detail because there's some other sessions this week, particularly on Thursday, there's a workshop where we'll go into much more detail on this. So I'm just going to skim over it. Please do come along on Thursday. The main thing I want to emphasize is that um, the presentation today will draw on primarily the key informant interviews which have taken place in Dhaka, and a survey of 720 households in that city. Okay, so what is the political economy analysis? Now, um, I've got sort of three different bits of it that I'm going to explain. So firstly, it's about using tools and frameworks to try and explain how institutions function. Um, so when I say institutions, um, many of you might think of a bank or a city corporation or uh, a government, but we also have a broader understanding of what institutions are. So, for example, you might think about the rules and norms which govern how we interact with each other. So, these could be formal institutions, uh, so things like laws. So, in people's sledge, there might be a bylaw in a particular city about what you can do with people's sledge, but there are also, more importantly, informal institutions which are more cultural. So, for example, in one country, you might have a particular attitude towards 
the reuse of people's lunch in agriculture, and in another country you might have a completely different attitude. So it's important to understand those informal institutions. The second bit of political economy analysis I'd like to talk about is um, how those institutions provide incentives to different stakeholders. And I think we all know what stakeholders means. It's, it can be an individual, a group, a whole section of society. Um, so in people's search, it might be some of these things that we, these different groups we want to think about. And finally, we want to think about how those stakeholders exert their influence. So when we say influence, it's, it can be informal or formal power. So a city, corporation, or a, you know, a municipality has certain formal, formal power. They can make laws, but people don't always keep to those laws. Okay? So, uh, if in a city uh, the FS bylaws are ignored, then you know, in theory you have, you have power, but in reality the influence is low. So it's important to think about how the informal and the formal are linked. Okay, and why do we do this? We want to support action. We want to, many of us in this room are engaging in dialogue and reform and fecal search management. If we really want to understand how to, how to make those reforms work, then we need to make sure they understand the, the underlying political context. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit about Dhaka City. A bit of confusing having a player talking about Dakar, me talking about Dhaka. I'll try and pronounce that correctly. Um, so Dhaka, uh, 9 million people, um, and it's really quickly changing. There's uh, you know, buildings going up all over the place. Um, and 99% of people are currently using the toilet, so that's great. There's almost zero identification in Dhaka. However, most toilets are now emptying to the drains, the storm drains, either directly uh, or indirectly via septic tanks which are connected to the drains and everything flows through. So what I want to emphasize here is that the predominant market in Dhaka for fecal sludge doesn't really exist. Um, almost nobody, there's almost no emptying services because nothing needs emptying, everything goes to the drains or to the sewage network which is pretty non-functional. Um, so the 50% there from our survey directly connected and 20% indirectly connected to the drains. So, I'm just going to describe a couple of tools that we might use in doing this PEA, it's for economy analysis. Um, the first one is process mapping. So, what we use this for is to understand how um, formal and informal moments in a process um, can, uh, can happen and how they interact, and then how you can find entry points to try and influence them. Okay, so you want to think about who your stakeholders are in a given process. So, let's say an important process in FSM is emptying of a pit. Um, you want to think about who are the stakeholders. It might be some of those, the household, uh, the manual empty, or the vacuum tank company who might offer a service and the household will choose which service they want to use. How would they choose that service? Uh, they might look at the price. Um, maybe, one is, maybe one service is cheaper than the other, but also they might be interested in the, how quickly they can arrive. So in Dhaka, you can, you can get a manual empty pretty quickly but the, the vacuum tank, if you want to get that service, it might take a few weeks, so even if it's more expensive, you might go to that other option. Um, and finally, look at the entry points for engagement. So these are some processes we could look at, and I'm going to choose the last one, which is on constructing a new building, because in Dhaka, with the rapid changes, that's quite an important determinant of fecal search services. So, um, this is an example of what's supposed to be the formal process when you construct a new building in Dhaka. So um, what first happens is the developer applies to Rajuk for a permit. Rajuk is the capital development authority in Dhaka. So they, they basically just they set building regulations, they enforce in theory building regulations. So once you've applied for your permit, then uh, Rajuk is supposed to review that and then talk to Dewa, so which is the utility um, about connections. And also the city corporations uh, in Dhaka who provide the small board drains and so on. Uh, and once all that's gone through, then the project is supposed to approve that construction. Then the developer, with a bit of paper, they construct the building, and they're supposed to build septic tanks and make sure they're not connected to the drains. And then Rajuk the inspects that, uh, and finally everybody moves in, and then when their septic tank is full, they arrange for empty. That's what's supposed to happen. In reality, however, uh, Rajuk often doesn't actually consult the city council or DWAS or the utility about this, so they would just go ahead anyway. Um, secondly, the developers often um, connect those, those septic tanks directly to the drains, so there is, no, there is no real container because all the, all the slush just goes directly through the tank and onwards. Um, while Rajuk is supposed to enforce and inspect, they don't have enough staff to do that, so 
often inspection doesn't really happen. And finally, you know, the occupants are supposed to um, empty that sludge, but in reality they never need to because it never fills up. Everything just goes straight through to the storm drains. So entry points. If we want to influence this process, we map the process in formal and informal. If we want to influence that, we might want to improve the application scrutiny involved in our and city council in that. And also we want to try and help Project improve their inspection. The second tool I want to look at is uh, stakeholder analysis. Okay. Um, here you want to identify stakeholders' interests and incentives and try and understand why people act as they do. It's going to rattle through this to the meat of it actually. The main point of this is you're going to, if you look at the diagram, uh, you want to map influence, so how much power in form or form all these stakeholders have, and also the, the interest that they have. So if, if people are very powerful and very uh, in favour of your intervention, they might fall in the top right hand bracket. So, uh, you might want to keep them satisfied. They're your friends, they're powerful, and they like what you're doing. This is if you were forming a um, But these guys, they, make them, they have no interest because they're, if they're left at the centre, then um, they're maybe opposing the reforms, okay? So if they're, they're opposing the reforms, but also they're very influential, they're a problem for you because they're trying to block you. Okay, so this is an example for DACA. Um, so again, we've got the same diagram influence up here and then interest down here. So these people, the property developers, if you want to reform FSM and DACA and get some public containment and empty services going, then these guys are going to oppose you because they will save money by not having proper containment, by not building proper septic tanks. So you need to be careful of them, you need to know that they're going to oppose everything. Whereas for Juk and the city corporations here uh, will they're moderately in favour, but they're also quite powerful, so they're your friends. Next, you might want to consider uh, down here you've got you know, quite low influence, the mechanical emptiness, as I said, almost zero market, um, and the sweepers who do, do do some some work. They're, they're very much in favour of reforming this because the better, the more containment there is, the more work there is. <coughs> However, they're very low down on the power scale. And finally, this is the kind of bottom left corner. Um, the households are important, but they, they don't really care what happens, they just want to have a minimum cost themselves. Um, yeah. So, this is an example of how this, these approaches can really help in, in actually thinking and working politically and actually, when you're doing an FSM intervention, making sure it's effective. So, in um, Indonesia, there was this recent project which finished a few years ago, uh, which was to help design city sanitation strategies and that resulted in a 300% increase in um, municipal finance for sanitation, which was great. But it wasn't always working that well. So early on in the project, they realised they had a problem. Um, the lead ministry was, um, for the project was Bapenas, which is the planning agency in Indonesia. And um, they were the lead with, with the World Bank, rather than the Ministry of Public Works, who traditionally lead on urban sanitation. So um, they had a problem where these guys in the Ministry of Public Works were less keen on the project and were basically blocking it. So after a while, the team involved uh, did some political economy analysis, they sat down and worked out what was going wrong, and they realized they needed um, someone who, who could really help them advocate for this, this reform. Um, and not, not necessarily a sanitation person, uh, but someone who knew the Ministry of Public Works, and knew those informal networks, those informal institutions, and was able to, to engage with them informally. So, it, it wasn't kind of you know, big meetings and like this, it was more you know, going for breakfast, going for dinner. Um, so the lessons are that if, if, you want to, if you want to have effective change, you really want to think about how things work in reality. Um, and you know, not necessarily the, the top sanitation expert, but someone who can actually work those, those meetings. Okay, and they may feel like that's obvious, but these guys spent a year trying to do it and it didn't work. So, I mean, it, it's always obvious after the, after the event. Okay, so here's my last slide of conclusion. So I've given you a very brief taste of what political economy analysis is. Um, and my, my sort of call would be that anybody can use this. It's not rocket science. Um, and, but it, and often some of the stuff might seem obvious, but it, what you need to do is make sure there's a shared understanding. So you, you and your colleagues who are working on this want to sit down and try and make sure you really understand what's going on with the different institutions. And you don't have to use all the tools that are available. Um, secondly, it's good because it helps you focus on the informality. Okay, so um, it's, there's a lot of informal processes in, in FSM, as we know, a lot of it's under the radar. So using these 
tools can really help you focus on that. And finally, it can really help you improve your programs because it helps you avoid barking up the wrong tree for potentially for years. Um, while, while you could have, if you'd done the analysis a bit earlier, you might have seen why that wasn't a great idea. Um, so finally, the results of our study will be out in the autumn for those, across those five cities, and then hopefully we'll have some broader lessons for the uh, physical economy out of that, as well as the other things. Um, please come on for the I mean, I suppose that the first answer would be around 
the fact that most of the institutions that deal with these problems are staffed predominantly by engineers who all throughout their education have, in, which for the people in charge now was predominantly in the 1970s and 80s. And at that time, the you know, uh, sewage was the, the dominant paradigm for urban sanitation. And so people would still want to apply that in their, uh, in their everyday work, and it's very much what, what they think is the solution. So I'm not an engineer, I can't, I'm an economist, I can't necessarily identify with that, but that's, that's one determinant of what I see happening. Um, another one with, I'm, I'm not saying that FSM isn't engineering, but it's less kind of, it's less kind of sexy, is building a new sewer network. Um, the second thing I think would be the, uh, would be the sort of rent seeking point and how, I mean, in a lot of countries that we're talking about, if you're going to be constructing a, a very capital intensive project, uh, you know, with lots and lots of different contracts, there are more opportunities to, for rent seeking than there would be for a very decentralized uh, fixed search management type of approach. So um, that's definitely part of it as well. I think we can probably talk about this a little bit more in the Q&A because I'm sure other people in the audience have other ideas of why, why there is this connect between on-site sanitation being so predominant, but then so it's getting more money. Okay, thanks. Now, uh, I think, uh, let me just remind you where we are on time. We started 15 minutes late, we, we ended one minute late. Yeah. Uh, so we've got 14 minutes if you want them. Yeah. If you were really desperate for lunch, we can stop now, but I, I suspect you want the 14 minutes. So let's go. Let's, uh... Okay, there's a hand over here. Uh, my name is Lita Fokono from DDB. I'm actually very glad to be in this presentation because um, I'm the project officer for the Tripura project from ADB. So, um, while in no peace we find some papers uh, our stakeholders, not just the government, uh, the public at large, wanting some intervention on FSM, generally um, where I find we get stuck is governments asking us where is the comparable cityscape data? I mean, I'm glad you put up some numbers on topics and topics, but um, we always, uh, for all of you actually, I mean, this, is, this is really where we start. As you say, in our cities, which we uh, co fund with the government, uh, I want to in India, um, it's all sewage, I mean, for various incentives. Ian was also describing it's visible, big for in the middle of the city, even if it captures 10%. But that's really development. So stakeholders, the public at large, don't want any lesser scale intervention. And to show it's not lesser, it's more appropriate, is where we're struggling because we don't really have a city scale comparable data to show. Here is your OPEX, here is your CAPEX, uh, and it really will solve your problem. Another uh, notion we find always struggling with is they think it's temporary. They think, oh, as soon as we get money, we will do the storage. This is uh, for the time being. So uh, if we can have a, a pool of data where we, where we uh, put together and, and use that as a tool to convince the stakeholders, uh, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, so, uh, Chari. Uh, with regard to the cost comparison uh, of on-site system versus uh, reticulated system, you said it's about one-fourth of the cost uh, indicated using HPEC data and other such sources. Now this on-site system, does it include individual investments being made by the households or it's a, a system cost for the fecal stretch management? Because there is a private investment that individuals are making. Uh, when you did this comparison of uh, does it include uh, real cost? Question for from us. Uh, I think it was very interesting in terms of the competition among the private players that we were trying to do. But my question is whether that is the kind of competition that you have or you are sort of uh, enabling, whether that is the right kind of competition or whether you can have a very different kind of competition market through maybe a zonal kind of program where you have different contracts for each zone in uh, Dakar and you have a more scheduled cleaning service. 
The reason I am asking is that your major point was achieving a better service and at a lower cost. And it is quite likely that if you have a different market structure than the one that you are promoting, it will be beneficial both to the privatized as well as to the household. But if it means a major role to be played by owners in facilitating that kind of a Thanks for that. Thank you. Just, just behind the mirror's hand. Just, just there. Um, this is Alexi Mokrek from Practical Action. I work on markets. I'm uh, also very interested in, in the market structuring. Two basic questions. What are you seeing as a result of the competitive bidding? Are you seeing certain companies get a larger market share and other companies dropping out? Or are you seeing uh, most companies uh, benefiting and secondly, um, you talked a lot about competitive bidding with regards to, I believe, companies with trucks, so this is mechanical emptying, but you showed a picture of manual emptying. I'm interested, what, what's the role that is played by the manual emptiers? Are they engaged in some way in this bidding process? Are they engaged in some way, or are they finding themselves being uh, brought out? So, um, but I, I'd echo the point, this is really interesting hearing this case study because it's a, a very different way of structuring the market compared to Zodal, which seems to be um, something we hear quite a lot about. The objective of our program is to make money and MTS disappear. In 2015, the government and we cannot accept people going inside without money. The main goal. But we realize that we have several employees, many employees who work in the past in this system. And the objective is to say how we can incite these many employees into the new organization. This is why, with the uh, privatization of the existing construction of NAM, we hire, the driver hire some many employees in, in, in the operation of SNAP. Can we realize that uh, we try to categorize money and Can we realize we have <coughs> the big part are not professional? <coughs> the big part do, uh, that, that, that's just money and duty. They are much more Out of work, they are emptying it in order to, to, to improve their revenue. This guy doesn't interest the project very much. But we can find some professional money and who work every day in the activities. For the guy, we try for example the public interest uh, we want to implement in the uh, in Dakar, for example, the public interest uh, is, is, is the kind of equipment who can separate solid and liquids at the household level. When we separate solid and liquid, what we are thinking about that, the liquid can be <coughs> in some way and the money can be can be higher and they can sell this the digital community from this chaos and they can get some revenue from that. Okay, thanks. Um, can I quickly on the second point? Yeah, the second point is, how much is the, if I, if I <coughs> what we can organize the consensus in order to, maybe you can uh, Okay. Maybe okay. you can start later. Yeah, Professor Jai, the cost includes the cost of collection and cost of treatment. But if I had the cost of septic tank, that probably will maybe go up by another hundred dollars. But it's still cheaper than network systems. Um, and regarding your question on whether we have examples at scale, um, probably not in India, but globally in other places things are worked. And currently WSP is engaging, looking at what has worked globally successfully and trying to articulate what will be relevant for India and hope to have that out in the next six months. Uh, so related to the two separate points which were made about what about uh, city cell and city scale and the of phase of the complex and about the, um, the question from Ravi about does it include household expenditure. I think this is really important because when we look at data on costs and, and expenditure it's really important they're comparable. 
And I would draw attention to a new or relatively new initiative by WSP called the Economics and Sanitation Initiative, which where a guy happens from WSP is trying to collect lots of data on this kind of thing and, and demonstrate how, how the different barriers of costs, sorry, the different barriers of costs, who bears the cost, households, uh, you know, city, city governments or others, does have a big, big effect on how the finance looks. So it's quite important to, when you present cost, cost data to understand who's actually paying for things. Um, and I think Guy on Thursday at the workshop, which I'll mention again, uh, Guy is going to be making a presentation on, on the ESI toolkit, so that would be very useful to take on the um, Okay, uh, I think we can take a few more. Um, have you, you've already asked one, haven't you? Okay, why don't you go for it? For about Marini, about the research, uh, it was interesting, you know, that 72% were interested on pain, which in fact, uh, normal tendency is uh, people would tend not to pay for anything. So, uh, were there any prior information drive to the people who so, uh, they become interested in paying anything? Were there any prior program like informing them about the benefits of uh, NT or not? Okay, good. Um, there's a question there. And the second person uh, My name is Rajesh, I'm from India. My question is to uh, Dr. Mai. Uh, you were mentioning that uh, in Dakar, uh, the septic management practice uh, is from loss to profit. So I would like to know which component of the value chain has contributed really towards that. So one thing what I know is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, there is a good uh, market for the, 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 the collection, uh, sorry, the, the, the conveyance, the, the dispatching part, but uh, the treatment, uh, I, I see uh, very often it's a big challenge. So uh, are you talking entirely the septic management is a profitable or only the, the, the collection part? Uh, I'm Anuke from Senegal. My question relates to the political economical analysis. And you, in your conclusion, you say the, the PAA was a tool for protection and the informality. I want to know how the informality helped to, to improve the practice to better manage the factors as much in the lower city. Thank you. Someone on this block? I am uh, Shikhar Shabastar from Practical Action India and my question is for Mr. Ravi Kumar. Uh, I would like to know, uh, you mentioned about the DPR being approved uh, in Tripura. I would like to know who is the agency responsible for preparation of the DPR and who will be the implementing agency and uh, if it's the state government agency, do you have uh, in the project plans for capacity building of the state government? Okay, thank you very much. I'm Mui from uh, Waterhead and uh, I would like to compliment uh, the young girls because I have come to from Dhaka and uh, you have mentioned the LPT quantitative uh, award. Well, uh, this political economy is very much uh, important for considering Dhaka City, but uh, you have mentioned many stakeholder development here. One part is important that uh, you mentioned that uh, some sort of flow diagram about the responsibility of Rajuk and others. So who is doing what? That is the critical part of this SSM, uh, before developing this SSM framework. And the good point is, I'm just supplementing uh, about your presentation that uh, the Dhaka SSM framework is now under development and it will be, uh, hopefully it will be, uh, you know, in the formal, way of uh, acceptation, acceptance by the, by the end of this year, or middle of this, uh, of this year. Maybe. So yeah. that's the only document or condition I would like to add. Um, I suppose I would say that um, traditionally when people think about institutional analysis, when people want to talk about institutional arrangements, you might only say, okay, well, the OMS is in charge of this, and then the Ministry of Public Works is in charge of that, and this is how it's going to work. But if you were focusing on the informality, that can really help you dig deeper into what really happens because you know the the, the formal institutions don't always operate as as it says on paper. So um, I don't know if I'm answering your question effectively, but the point the point is that if you focus on the informality, then you can try and get underneath what appears to be happening and, and really understand what actually happens. Um, I, I don't think there was a question from the gentleman from Wall Trade. I mean, I would just say that yes, the Brewer framework has been developed from 
for the for that is looks good on paper. I think mean, we'll, we'll see if it's implementable in practice. The main interesting thing coming out of that is uh, it's proposing a tax, uh, a sanitation tax, so uh, and also a payment to empties to dispose of their sludge safely. So we'll see if I think mean, that's a great idea. We'll see if it actually works. The objective is to improve the profitability of the whole value chain. At the transport component, we realize that at the transport uh, transportation component, we realize that uh, when we try to understand the OPEX, the crop of, uh, of the NGLs, we realize that uh, the maintenance cost represents percent of the activity. We realize also that police harassment represent 80%. By removing the track, we realize that we can decrease the maintenance cost of the NGLs and they can earn more money by reducing the expense on that. Mm -hmm. By certification, by giving the license to employees, we realize we can fight against police harassment because we involve the police authority in this process. And right now, tracks employees will be considered as the health representative of the Nobody stops them, and they can reduce this police harassment. This is why we want to do the process. In the treatment side, the objective is to optimize the function. By the government operation, we realize nothing was optimized. We realize when you need one day labor here, you have four day labor. And when the private sector is coming, they, they make a clear step in order to have the right person at the right place. And by optimizing the, uh, the, the hiring of the personnel, they can improve also the the, the, the product of the of the We realize also that any marketing strategy was done by the by owners in order to sell the by product. But right now we realize that the private sector signed several contracts with several uh, companies in order to sell these by products. Okay. And the objective Thanks, thanks. I, I just want to give you that we want to go further, we got to move forward with the only process. And with the only processor by implementing this only processor in our restaurant, in our electricity plant, we produce electricity, we produce drinking water, we produce ash, and we have enough items in order to increase the added value coming from the electricity plant. And we can pass on these benefits to the whole system in order to reduce the cost of the NPA. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, uh, Question: 72% uh, of the uh, respondents uh, show their interest to the regular dispatching. That uh, we provide them with information: what is the regular dispatching, what plus and minus of the regular dispatching, that what is they should uh, pay before the service. So. Their uh, thought is more on economic system so because of uh, a small and so much more affordable uh, for them to pay rather than waiting until the problem has happened. Uh, the appraisal was done by the Ministry of Urban Development and the DPI was prepared by WSP. Implementation will be done by the state government, by the city government, and capacity building support will be extended by the state government to the city. Uh, thank you to the speakers uh, and to the audience that really participated. I'd like to thank everyone. I mean, there are lots of people that probably leave frustrated because they didn't get the first question. Some didn't really get it to a third. So thank you very, very much. It was, uh, I think it was a lively discussion and a limited time. Big things that I think we're taking forward. There's an issue about dedicated institutions, whichever functions we're talking about. Policy, implementation side, regulation came up quite a few times. I heard a lot about data, access to data, reliability of data, and on the political economy side, just a sense, I think when you heard him talk, most of you could probably hear this is stuff that you're already doing. But I think what I hear coming out of this is 
maybe one should sit back a bit and think about the political economy, not just barge in there. We tend to just go for the most influential person, and maybe it's more useful to understand who else in the system can make things happen and not happen. There was a considerable interest in markets, and maybe this is why we say political economy and not only politics. Um, and I thought, I mean, that's obviously hugely relevant in this field where the, there is a, there's a dynamic private sector that's already there, but this is waiting to get the gap to do things in many cases. And it seems to me that we need to understand better the markets, who's going to compete, how do you make it fair, and how do you get to the customer. And that's maybe the last point I want to say. The researchy type of issues that came up in the course of the discussion I felt were interesting to me because they raised the issues about what does the customer want. And I think uh, that's the issue that seemed to be hugely absent in this whole debate. Whether it's public or private sector, um, the reason that fetal sludge management has not been addressed is because no one cares really much about what those customers think and want. And maybe that's one of our major challenges. That's not, there were many more things in a rich discussion, but thank you very much for your participation and to the speakers in particular and for helping us to manage a difficult time.
about 77, I mean 70 uh, US dollars. And the problem with empty process is that um, the people themselves have to go and pay for the empty and then uh, after paying, they have to add in water in big latrines and then stir the, the content, which is quite a problem for them because they don't want to deal with such kind of issues. And we propose, and thanks to as a Queen municipality in Durban, South Africa, that they developed the the developer system. So the Water Utilities Corporation um, uh, is intending to use uh, this system so that the sludge that can actually be produced from that system can be beneficial and the you know, cost probably will in, in, increase because of the quality of sludge that will be coming out of, out of there. So as you can see right now, because of the quality and the services that are there, the 10, 10 ton truck costs only three dollars, around three dollars uh, for the treated sludge, which is not of very good quality. So in conclusion, the penalties in, that are embedded in the policies are very lenient, so they need to be looked at, and the cost recovery should be uh, seriously uh, thought, and the ethical quality standards as well uh, should be uh, looked at. Which is the end of the project. Thank you very much. Um, we are planning a new project of nickel slash treatment, so that's why we did a formative measures to see the situation there. So I'm presenting the findings. Um, in all, the population is not huge, only 6.5 million, and of which 70% people use some form of products. Uh, and most of the rural products are also sanitation. They are uh, into big lactins and the new period they can take to keep them running. Uh, so the formative research was we interviewed 1,100 people uh, randomly selected from 25 villages in the institution of work. Uh, and we also did interview with them. So in those areas, 76% of the products were uh, constructed over the last uh, five years when we started uh, working uh, in those areas. Uh, and most of the toilets are constructed by, by the households without any subsidy. The 6% households which receive subsidy, they receive it in the form of some uh, wings, some construction materials. That's not very huge. Uh, but uh, we asked people whether they needed to empty. 30% uh, people, they already uh, had to empty their uh, their pits, and most of them uh, well, uh, had their pit full, and 86% people had to empty their pit to keep their toilets running. But you can see the other other uh, little things. Two percent people have returned to ODM. Yeah. So uh, to uh, to us, um, having a proper empty service is very important to keep the toilets running and go to have the program sustainable. Um, there is private emptying services there and they are growing. Uh, but you can see the cost, cost is too high. It is $50 um, per emptying uh, episode, which means that it is the cost of construction of the super, uh, substructure of the toilet. And people, people are not happy with it. Most of the people say that the cost is too high, so they cannot afford it, which also allows that people may go back to open defecation if we cannot uh, have a proper empty services there. Um, people, um, most people know what they can get the services, and, but they are not aware about those things. So there is no preparation when their piece is full, they have to do something, but they cannot afford it. 
Um, people, most people do not know where the slot is disposed, uh, and our, we observe the slot is usually disposed uh, in the public, uh, sorry, in the, in the open water bodies we charm them. Uh, and, um, and people are known to work about um, the health hazard of animals. Um, but people want to use um, uh, sludge uh, uh, treated. Uh, the required that uh, most people are interested about biogas, cooking fuel, or dry sludge in the cooking fuel, and soil conditioner. But we also verified this data with the people through which uh, we implement our program. And the first two things, uh, biogas in the cooking oil and dry starch in cooking oil, is not something that's going to work. So what we shall be doing is that we shall be working on making starch in solid soil uh, conditioner. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the private sector, they are, they are providing anti services. And their growth is potential. Um, uh, this, this company started about four years ago, and by now, two of them have four trucks. They started with a very small one. So the financial outlet is very high there. Um, so in conclusion, we want to say that uh, the government needs to define its role, how they can, um, uh, well, how, can, how they can regulate the private sector so that the price doesn't go high and doesn't go uh, beyond the affordability of the people. Uh, no service or unaffordable service needs that. Uh, people will return to OD. So to have the sanitation program sustainable, we get to get uh, proper self management and different uh, options. One of the potential way to get uh, the prices down is probably the resource recovery from this much. Thank you very much. KJ Nath is next. A cost-effective eco-approach for fecal sludge management. Good afternoon. <clears throat> the fecal sludge management of a country would be as good as the wastewater and human excrement disposal system. In India, presently, uh, living apart from billion plus mega cities, the most of the urban population, about 72 percent of the urban population, lives in class one and class two towns. Um, and where only 13% of uh, the wastewater is collected by the sewerage uh, and treatment system. So the rest is depending on either septic tank or pit latrine. You can see the, that uh, in septic tank uh, from toilet to goes to septic tank, then by the, by the tanker it goes to the field, uh, either drainage where it is composted with solid waste or uh, it could be drying waste. On the other hand, uh, you can see the conventional sewage treatment plant where the sludge is taken care of by sludge digester, thickening, stabilization, dewater and sludge to land is uh, This shows uh, some of the present situation in the sludge of the trenches. Uh, they are not managed properly, the huge health hazard to the workers, there is environmental pollution. Now, Sulab system of double feet four plus toilet addresses to all the problems. It has two feet, one is used at a time, so that when uh, one feet is full, you can leave it for one year. And when it becomes totally pathogen free, completely safe for manual handling by the worker, and it is good manure and soil conditioner. So I was also developed another uh, technology uh, for isolated population or community toilet complexes, where from the sludge goes to the anaerobic digester where from biogas is generated, which is used for generation of electricity, like clean cooking and body warming. Uh, it, uh, the effluent goes to a treatment plant, sedimentation, filtration, aeration, and uh, uh, carbon absorption, followed by UV radiation, where the effluent is totally safe for disposal into public system or rivers or, uh, 
or any water or body. On the other hand, from the digester, the sludge could be collected uh, into sludge pits or drying beds or plant treatment. Thank you. In case uh, because I did not elaborate further, but in case you have got any queries, we can answer to your question. Okay, and our last speaker of this session, Atijaya Kamabanich. Look at Look. Good afternoon. Today I have you to present on behalf of Dr. Atijaya. Um, get from uh, our first interview talking about the uh, about the participatory planning in development of the because of the strategy um, for this camp in Thailand. Um, I think that uh, all, of, uh, all of you may know about the SWOT analysis and. Uh, uh, in this uh, in this photo, we will we'll show you about the uh, the method, like a systematic method, in order to uh, in order to promote about the strategies. Um, firstly, uh, for the method, uh, we will invite the uh, uh, stakeholder from the okay. central government, um, also uh, the local government who will take care in the people's slot management. And after that, we will have like a questionnaire and also uh, uh, interview with them in order to prioritize the factors in terms of the SWAT. And after that, uh, we will work like uh, the matrix uh, as show you in, uh, in this slide um, we will identify about the, uh, the five important factors for each part and after that we will try to uh, matching between about the uh, internal and external factors and after that we will Proposed and discussion in terms of the strategy for the central government, the local, and also for the private sectors. Uh, for output of, of this research, uh, we would like to propose like a systematic method for the SWOT and the task analysis in order to. Uh, I think that in order to help us uh, not miss the critical points or critical factors from 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 discussions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I know you're all uh, full from lunch and kind of trying to sit away, but uh, it, how about the speakers? Yeah. No service means open education. No, because large management service means people don't go back to open education. So sustainability for sanitation service depends on successful people large management service. Okay, do we have another? Technology choice needs to be relevant to the context. I am from India, Yangi, uh, environment engineer. I want to say that what are the sludge disposal standards in countries where the, when the we dispose the digested sludge and what are the standards that can be followed either from the WHO or by other any so We are talking about the disposal of the sludge. What are the standards for disposal uh, treatment? What are the standards for disposal? Uh, why, why don't we just <coughs> open it up for questions? We actually have another eight minutes left of the session. So, do you have questions for any of the speakers?
Hello, my name is Ush, the center from South Africa. Um, I have questions to Zuchaya. Okay. Um, when you, in your model, you mentioned impact of the system. Is it specifically on, a, on one dimension, for example, environmental impact, or do you look at a whole range of impacts, like economic impact, social impact? That was one question, and the other one also to you. Um, do you have sufficient data to support that, or is it one of those cases of bad, like best available data? Uh, the first question, yes, uh, we are looking at a range of indicators, which would be, right now we have, uh, as you know, this is a proof of concept, so what we put out there right now is access, coverage, environment, health and, health and water, and also cost, and resource requirements, uh, like land, energy, water. So that is what we have now, but I'm open to you know suggestions on indicators. And that goes back to your uh, second question, which is, uh, so in the back end of the model, we have the system parameters. So what does the system need? So a uh, lot of, I mean, from uh, our discussion with a lot of experts, data has been, yes, best knowledge, and that's what we have right now. Uh, so. Uh, I would say, you know, it is about getting better with the data and this uh, decision support tool has the ability that if you get better data, you can source it and just write, you know, just fill up a data entry sort of a table. So it has, it's a live system which can be updated and gets better if, when you have better data. Hi everyone, my name is Aldi from the National Funding Agency of Indonesia. I would like to address my question to Mr. Odilili. Uh, from Botswana. It's very impressive to, when I hear about your presentation, you kind of provide 30,000 toilets to rural uh, inhabitants in Botswana. And it actually um, impacts, and we can see the result, like 100% increase in rural uh, access of sanitation uh, from 22% to 40 something percent. How, my question would be, what are the accompanying measures of when you provide those 30,000 toilets? I mean, because if I'm not mistaken, my colleagues here in, 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 are from Indonesia could, could correct me if I'm wrong, but we, I've read that we have in Indonesia have the same program for, for uh, providing toilets uh, to our population, but it doesn't really impact on, because on the access because uh, the sustainability is not, uh, you know, the, 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 there's something wrong with the sustainability that toilet doesn't really, the provision of the toilet doesn't really uh, result in access. So could you, could you provide us with more information on how you were doing the, the provision you know, the company measures, whether probably it's education or advocacy or kind of stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Actually, the access is, is, is not 100% actually. Okay. Yeah, this is what the government uh, was doing uh, in order for them to provide uh, such kind of systems. So, um, when they, they looked around for people who needed um, uh, sanitation systems, and register them, and then provided them with the substructure of the pillar tree, lined um, with bricks, and then the, the uh, constructed the slab on, on top, and then they gave the the the, the, the substructure for the users to build the, the, the superstructure. So in, in each and every plot, whenever everyone is applying for a plot to build a house, the government will first of all go there and build such kind of um, substructure. So that is how they manage to access uh, such a number of, such a number of um, people. I don't know if I asked, answered you correctly. 
I'm from SM in Bangladesh. I just uh, asked a uh, question to Abdul uh, Hotel. You mentioned that 2% uh, of the people went back to open education because of no recent services there. What are the other reasons? And uh, if I'm um, very interested, if you say the number one, or then I'm very interested. Uh, 86% people, they give their kids when, when they become full, right? And some people shared and some people uh, reconstructed new toilet, but only 2 point some percent, they, they had to go back to open education because they could not afford um, the service. Right? But, well, this is 2% um, of the 13%, right? For those, uh, the toilets are full. But my point here is that if we don't uh, provide an affordable service there, well, this will grow, right? That's why I'm saying that no service or unaffordable service means the sanitation uh, program is not sustainable. And this will probably be your last question. I'm, I'm Norio Saito, I'm from Asian Development Bank. I have also questions to this uh, house case. Very interesting presentation, thank you. And uh, you mentioned that uh, private sector is emerging to provide uh, FSM services. But you also mentioned that it would cost about fifty dollars to empty the septic tanks. So does that mean that people can really afford to pay that fifty dollars to the private sector? That's the first question. And the second thing is, uh, after they, uh, the private sector gets a uh, bigger sludge, does the local government monitor how that sludge is going to be treated or disposed of in the end? Um, to your first question, for cultural reason, Lao people, well, there is no manual anything there, right? Lao people just doesn't like to do it. So if the toilet is full, they just go back to open education in the forest or wherever they can, right? So people have to have to empty their feet if they want to get it. So those who have toilets for two, three years, they are habituated to use it, and if they can afford, they just empty it otherwise not. Uh, for your second question, there is no institutional responsibility defined yet. Right? There is just nobody. This, this empty trucks, they are registered at trucks, they provide um, tax to the government, but there is no regulation per se to, to monitor them. Okay, hey, I, I think our time is up. Sorry, you will have to ask a little later, but thank you so much for being on time and coming up with some really good questions. So the session is over.